Hello everyone, we're going to go through our lesson for week 10, lesson 1. Alright, and what we're going to be learning about are the different types of radiation and how to balance nuclear radiation equations. Alright, so nuclear chemistry is a subject that a lot of students can find difficult, but we're going to break it down to be easier for you. Alright, I will say that you definitely need to have your periodic table out and ready to go for anything that we do with this section. All right, that's going to be imperative. All right, so first of all, what is radioactive decay? All right, radioactive decay is the spontaneous disintegration of a nucleus into a slightly lighter nucleus accompanied by electromagnetic radiation. All right, so we have a radioactive element all right and it undergoes decay and it becomes a more stable element right because things don't like being radioactive so they decay until they become stable and then some kind of electromagnetic radiation all right that gets shoved off into space so things that are radioactive decay to become stable. Now, the first type of radioactivity that we will look at, the first kind of particle, is this alpha decay. All right, and note that is a Greek symbol. It looks just like this if you were to handwrite it. All right, it's a Greek symbol. All right, so alpha decay is when two neutrons and two protons are released from the nucleus. This is the particle right there, okay? Now, it looks exactly like a helium, all right? It has a mass of four, and it has two protons. So two no neutrons, two protons. That means it has a positive two charge as well, but that's a little extra, all right? It, it's big enough that if you had a sheet of paper, this particle would be stopped by the sheet of particle. It's the, the biggest, slowest, and fattest of the radioactive, radioactive particles, all right? Now look at this uh, picture down at the bottom, all right? We're starting off with something radioactive. It's not stable, all right? So it undergoes decay like we just talked about in the, the first slide, all right? And then we're left with a new element, radon, which is more stable than what it was before. And then we have the alpha particle. So the alpha particle looks like this and thank goodness that we learned this isotope notation right this is what we learned last week so it's sticking around folks so we have a radioactive particle breaking down to become a little bit more stable and it releases out into space the alpha particle all right now decay is a uh, really important all right, we have radioactive decay because we don't want things in nature staying radioactive. All right, so that's alpha, let's beta decay. Now beta decay, its Greek symbol, if you write it, is a B with a little bit longer stick. All right, one side's just a little bit longer. All right, but beta decay is smaller, it's faster. All right, it could go through a sheet of paper but it could be stopped by like tinfoil or glass. All right, now beta decay is when a neutron turns into a proton. So a neutral thing in the atom becomes positive and it kicks off an electron. Now the symbol for beta decay, well, we have the B, but what does it look like in uh, like in a, this example down here in an equation? It looks like this, zero, negative one e it's an electron with a negative one charge right that gets kicked off so this is actually what this is right here so we have iodine 131 and it undergoes decay and it breaks off into xenon which if you notice all right it actually changed at the bottom it went from 53 to 54 and it, once again, it changed into a new atom. And then this 
0, negative 1, E, this beta particle gets kicked off. All right, so that's beta types of radioac radioactivity. Just like this right here, all right, except without the pictures. Show you an example. The top and the bottom, all right, the total. All right, and then we're going to go on, all right? Now, if you did the makeup work or if you were in class, we talked about gamma, but right now we're going to focus on giving you help on balancing nuclear equations, all right? So when we talk about nuclear equations, it's uh, nuclear reactions or reactions that affect the nucleus of an atom. It's the process of decay, all right? Now, the rule is when we're balancing nuclear equations, those numbers that we see for the atomic numbers and the mass numbers must be equal on both sides. So if we have an equation, we have the reactants, we have the arrow, and then we have the products. All right, and it's saying the numbers that we see on both like the top and the bottom have to stay the same on both sides. And we're gonna practice this and look at plenty of examples to make sense of it. But the product itself can be a new element. So we're gonna have our periodic tables out so we could look at the wonderful little atomic numbers and see if it's changed, all right? And see if it's changed to a new element. I got two examples right here. On the top, I got alpha decay. On the bottom, I got beta decay. And I wanna point out what is happening. All right, so see this arrow? This is the middle. This side is the reactants. This side is the products. All right, now note, if I look at this really carefully, I have to make sure the top numbers, which is the mass number, right? And I just misspelled mass like an idiot. It's okay. We all have those mistakes. All right, the mass number for the reactants is 222. That means the top numbers on the product side must equal 222 as well. So I got four plus 218. That equals 222. Look at that. It says that right there, all right? The bottom number is 86. That means both of these have to equal six, uh, 86. And what do you know? 2 plus 84 is equal to 86. So the top numbers, if you were to look at this as like a big problem, all right, should be equals. The bottom numbers should be equal as well. All right, let's look at for beta decay. Now, this is our beta particle, right? That's our beta particle. But that doesn't change the fact that the top numbers have to be equal to the bottom numbers. All right, so let's look at this to see if it's right for beta. Okay, I have my reactants on this side and I got my products on that side. All right, and we're gonna look at it and see if the top numbers are equal and the bottom numbers are equal. So we got three on the reactant side, right there, see where it says three. And so that must mean on the right-hand side, it must be three as well. Well, if I got zero plus three, that is also three, they were equal. Okay, the bottom number, all right, the bottom number is one, right there, you see where it says it right next to the hydrogen? So that means the bottom number, aka the atomic number, must also equal to one. Well, I got a negative one and a two, so negative one plus two is one. <gasps> they match up. Okay, now that's, all good and stuff these are examples already done for us but what you're gonna have to do is solve for these things all right one place is gonna be blank on these little equations 
All right, and these equations are like the same thing as if it was, you know, three is equal to x plus one. Well, obviously x is equal to two, right? I mean, it's we're doing simple algebra here, except now we're looking at it with elements and radioactive decay. So we're practice several example examples of these. All right. So let's take a look at this first example. I have the reactants over here, and I got the products over here. So the top numbers, we got to figure out what the top numbers got to equal. Okay, well, I got 3 and a 1, so that makes a total of 4 on the top. That makes a total of 4. All right, there's only one blank over here, so there's no pluses. So the top number has to be 4. Okay, and then the bottom numbers also have to be the same. So 1 plus 1 equal 2. Okay, well, we got to figure out what element to write here. So we look at the periodic table. All right, we look at the periodic table. The periodic table, I'm going to write this in here so we remember at the atomic number 2. And we see that it, it is helium. All right, so we put an H-E right there. And what do you know? For the first one, I've just bounced the equation. One hydrogen that has a mass of 1, and another hydrogen with a mass of 3, if they were to undergo some kind of radi radioactive decay, it makes a helium particle that looks like an alpha particle. That's not necessary at this point, though. Okay, so let's see if we could balance the other one. Okay, well, here's the arrow. So we got our reactants over here. We got our products over here. So they have to equal to each side. So I got only one thing on my reactant side, and it's mass, the top part is 239. So on this side, I need some number plus 4 is equal to 239. So 4 plus this random number is going to equal 239. Well, using your algebra, you subtract 4 right here, you subtract 4 right here, so x is equal to what? 235. So that means I have to have a top number of 235. I have to have a mass of 235. So we're using algebra to solve for these things. All right. Then my bottom number, I got 94 on this side. So I have to have some number equal to 94. So I got a 2. That's what I start off with. So 2 plus x. Well, we solve for x, minus 2, minus 2. So 92 is what x is. So I write down 92. Okay, so I got my numbers, right? Now I got to figure out what element I'm looking for. Well, the bottom number is the atomic number, right? So if we look on the periodic table, for what element has a atomic number of 92? I see that it is uranium with a symbol of U. Okay, so we're going right along here right here. So let's see if we could work out the next one. The next one is a more difficult one because we see that the arrow, we have two things on both sides. We have two reactants and two products. All right, we only have to figure out one space though. So let's take a look at the top numbers over here. The mass, which is the top numbers. On this side, I got a 239 plus a 4. And it is equal to some x that we don't know, plus a 1. Okay, so this is 243 equal to x plus 1. So we subtract the 1, subtract the 1, and we have 242 is equal to x. 
your algebra teacher should be thinking me that we are practicing this. Oh, you're just going to be so smart. All right, but the x must have a mass of 242. All right, now let's try to figure out our bottoms. The bottom on the side, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we have some room, there, right? All right, the bottom, which is the atomic number, has 92, there's our bottom, plus 2, okay, and it's equal to some x plus 0. That's the bottom for this n right there that you see. n means just a neutron that got kicked off. All right, well, x is by itself now, and 92 plus 2 is 94. So x is 94, so my bottom number is 94. All right, so I got my numbers for the top and the bottom. Now we just got to figure out what symbol to write. So if this is the atomic number, I look for the atomic number that has uh, 94 as its answer. So I look at it. All right, and the symbol I need to write down is PU. All right, stinky element. No, I'm just joking. It's not. So we did three examples. We're going to do th four more. I was thinking three, but I forgot I had four. All right, so let's quickly work through these examples. Okay, first of all, we have our reactants over here, our products over here. All right, and the top numbers on the reactants have to equal the total of the top numbers on the products. So if I look at it, I don't know, I have a blank on the side, and it must equal four, because this is the top number right there, plus 208. So x is equal to 212. So I write down 212. Maybe I throw in a different color. That would help, right? Okay, I'm looking at my other ones. Erase this. I'm looking at the bottom numbers now, which are the atomic numbers. All right, I don't have anything right there, so it's x. And so that's it of the reactants, and it must equal the products. So I got a 2 on the bottom plus a 81 on the bottom. So that means that x is equal to 83. Well, I could go ahead and write that in. 83. Okay, so now i got to figure out the element, what the element is. So I'll look up 83 on the periodic table. That's the atomic number. All right, don't get those confused. You only look up the atomic number on the periodic table. 83 has a symbol of B-I, bismuth, the thing of Pepto-Bismol. All right, so like I said, the tops have to be equal. The bottoms have to be equal. Okay, that doesn't change from how we did it on the last one. All right, let's keep going. Okay, over here, I have the reactants. I got the products right here. So if I look at the top numbers, which is the mass numbers, I got 37, and it's equal, so that's the only thing on the side, plus some x that we don't know, plus zero. So that means that x is 37. The mass didn't change. The mass didn't change. So I could write in 37 as the top number. All right, let's take a look at the bottom numbers. I only have one thing over here that is 19. It must be equal to, oh look, that's, we don't know what that is. So x plus a negative one. So what do we got to do? Well, same thing you do in algebra. If this is a negative one, we're going to add one. We're going to add one. So this is 20 for the bottom. Because 19 is equal to 20 plus a negative one. Which is the same thing as 19 is 20 minus one. All right, so we look up 20 on the periodic table. 20 on the periodic table is calcium. All right, calcium. 
Okay, we're gonna look at our third example. I'm just gonna erase this a little bit so I have a little bit more room to write. Okay. We once again put a little dash right there. If, if you wanna put the dash there, just to remember that on things on the left side must equal to things on the right side, go right ahead. You don't have to though. All right, let's take a look at the mass numbers, which is the top. Okay, so on this side I got 226, that's it. And it is equal to four plus we don't know it, it's x. So I got to solve for x, so I would subtract the 4 right there, subtract the 4 right there, so I got 222 is equal to x. Okay, well I'm going to go ahead and write in 222 as x. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, except now with the bottom numbers. Alright, so on the I got 88 on this side, and it must be equal to 2 plus we don't know it, so it's x, x. So I'll solve for that, minus two, minus two. So x is equal to 86, all right, 86. Now I gotta look up 86 on the periodic table to see what element this is, and I got Rn, all right, radon, which is a noble gas. And by now you're seeing this, you know, this over and over again, and you're going, oh, okay, this makes a little bit of sense, all right. And remember, the top numbers have to be equal to the top numbers on the product side. All right, the bottom numbers, the atomic numbers on the reactants must equal the bottom numbers for the products. All right, and yes, when things go undergo radioactive decay, they become a new element. That's what we've been seeing. All right, let's do one last one. We stop the, uh, we put the line right there so we know the reactants from the products. Okay, so let's go ahead and work out top numbers. The top numbers I see are 9 plus 1, and it must be equal to x plus 4. So I'm solving this, it's 10 is equal to x plus 4. That means that x is equal to 6. So I'm going to go ahead and write Six right there. Now let's work out the bottom numbers. All right, I see I got a four plus one equals, because I put the equal sign to represent the changing from the reactants to the products. We don't know what this one is, so we say X and then plus two. So I'll solve for this. I got five is equal to X plus two. So that means that X is equal to three. So I go ahead and I'm going to write three right there. Now I just gotta look up what element I'm talking about. I look up three for the atomic number on the periodic table and this is lithium. So as you can see, you just need to keep in mind that you're doing the, the top numbers, the mass numbers, all right? And then you do the atomic numbers, the ones on the bottom, and it has to be equal on both sides, simple, algebra all right so go ahead and you're probably going to practice on the worksheet that we sent out if you need to ask questions go ahead and ask you know me or Bron that okay and uh good luck